All right, Danny just dropped this and I keep hearing, I haven't read this article yet, so I'm just gonna read it afresh with you guys. I keep hearing that there's an IQ limit for cops. I, I have never seen that. I've, I keep hearing it, but I've never seen it in writing. So we're gonna go over this. This is from an ABC News article that's pretty old, 23 years old, September 8th, 2000. And it says, a man whose bid to become a police officer was rejected after he scored too high on an intelligence test has lost an appeal in his federal lawsuit against the city. The second U.S. Court of Appeals in New York upheld a lower court's decision that the city did not discriminate against Robert Jordan because the same standards were applied to everyone who took the test. Quote, this kind of puts an official face on discrimination in America against people of a certain class, Jordan said today from his Waterford home. I maintain you have no more control over your basic intelligence than your eye color or or your gender, or anything else. So this guy naturally has a high IQ. He said he does not plan to take any further legal action. Jordan, a 49-year-old college graduate, took the exam in 1996 and scored 33 points, the equivalent of an IQ of 125. But New London police interviewed only candidates who scored 20 to 27 on the theory that those who scored too high could get bored with police work and leave soon after undergoing costly training. There is an overqualification aspect of other jobs because if you are if you are a highly educated person, for example, who applies to work at McDonald's or Lowe's, it is beneficial to management to not hire you, but rather hire somebody who's got less intellectual capability, let's call it, than you. Because if you're intelligent, you can more easily find a higher paying job somewhere else. So I understand from the corporate and even small company perspective of hiring somebody who's not in a position to readily get another job because I'm about to spend a whole bunch of time and a whole bunch of resources as a, as a company owner or a corporate uh, manager to get you up to speed on doing this job. And if after I've done that, you find another job, then I've wasted my company's time and my company's resources trying to make you into the best employee that I can make you. So it's beneficial. I see the benefit for companies to hire people who are not as skilled and not as intelligent. On the police force, um, I can understand that to one degree, but then there's another aspect where the police force and the people in the police department, the higher ups, don't want a higher IQ person because higher IQ people tend to employ critical thinking. And if you employ critical thinking and you start asking questions, then you can start looking under rocks and opening closets and finding skeletons. And that would be another reason that a police department wouldn't want to hire a higher IQ individual. Not only that, there's the conformist aspect of just doing what you're told, regardless of what is right. Because I don't know what the ratio is of intelligent versus unintelligent people on the scale of morality, but it seems like I read a study one time where there's a significant percentage of people who are of higher intelligence that have a more stringent moral code or an, a base of operations on where they operate, you know, on principle instead of doing what they're told, regardless of what is right, they do what is right, regardless of what, what they're told to encapsulate that. I don't know what the percentage is, and it was a long time ago that I read this and things may have changed. I don't know. And that is not to say that there aren't intelligent people out there who violate their moral code on the regular and who don't have any kind of principles as a springboard from which to operate in life. And they will use their intelligence to exercise control over others where those others don't want to be controlled. So I get that. But typically higher educated people have some foundation of a moral code and they also typically are cleaner 
want better for their neighborhoods, are willing to do the things that it takes to create a community that's safer. Whereas when you have less intelligent people, they tend to go into areas where the crime is higher. Intelligent people don't want to live around crime. Unintelligent people have no, sometimes they have no recourse and no way to get out of their particular situation at that particular time. So they live in crime infested neighborhoods. And I know there's a whole bunch of nuance that can go into this thing. There's a whole bunch of variables that come into play. So I get that. So I do understand the cops not wanting to hire a higher IQ person because who wants to be questioned all the time? Just do your job. Do what we tell you to do. Be the revenue generator we want you to be. We don't care about your moral compass. We just want you to go out there and empower the state so that we can get more funding, so we can get those MRAPs, and so we can get better equipment, so that we can enforce more laws that make us more money, take away more of their rights, and give us more power. It just makes sense. You don't want somebody more intelligent than you down your chain of command because they could get your job and start actually making a difference and changing things. So this is interesting. So he's this 49 year old college student. He takes this exam. He scores 125 or 33 points. And he finds out that the only candidates that the new London police, and I doubt this is just relegated to them. I bet that other police departments do this too. Can't prove it, but it, it's, it's likely based on what we've seen in video after video, they only go after people who scored 20 to 27. Interesting. Most cops just above the normal average score nationally for police officers is 21 to 22, the equivalent of an IQ of 104 or just a little above average. I've heard it's even, it's way lower than that, like way lower, embarrassingly lower. Jordan alleged his rejection from the police force was discrimination. Yes, that's not even to say that all discrimination is bad. When you're hiring somebody, you're discriminating. You, you want the best person. That's, that's, you're making a judgment call. It's like, no, I want the best person, the person who's likely to do the best job for the money that I'm going to pay them, that they're willing to receive, and somebody who's not going to rip me off while I'm gone on a vacation or something. So you're discriminating. <clears throat> now, if you're discriminating based on anything other than qualifications or who you think is the person that's the, the moral fit for your company, because you want a moral person working for your company. Do you want to hire somebody, knowingly hire somebody that is immoral? No. You want to you wanna hire somebody that, who's got principles, man. You want to hire somebody who goes by the golden rule of doing to others what you want done to you and conversely not doing to others what you wouldn't want done to you because that's how you want your business to be run. You want your business, you want to basically duplicate yourself into somebody who's applying for the job. He sued the city saying his civil rights were violated because he was denied equal protection under the law. Dude, I'm so glad Jordan didn't become a badge wearing, ego driven drunk on his own authority police officer. But the U.S. District Court found that New London had, quote, shown a rational basis for the policy in a ruling dated August 23rd. The Second Circuit Court agreed. The court said the policy might be unwise, but was a rational way to reduce job turnover. Jordan has worked as a prison guard since he took the test. So you went into law enforcement anyway. So what do you think? Do you think for the most part, the problem with cops is that they have a low IQ? Can you have a low IQ and high morality? Can you have a high IQ and low morality? I think so. Isn't the issue rather that if you're going to have a person who's quote, enforcing laws, and by that, I mean, fulfilling their oath to the constitution and protecting and defending the constitution of the United States against all foreign and domestic enemies. Don't you want them to be of a high moral character? So they're actually employing the golden rule and not out there abusing people they're supposed to be protecting and serving. I don't know. Leave your thoughts about this for the world and the global thought police in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already subscribe to this channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody. You know, don't forget to subscribe to my email list or my website, highimpactflix.com. 
If you haven't done so already, if you want to uh, support the channel, the links are in the description, or you can become a channel member or grab a hard hitting conversation starting design. You can put on a shirt, hoodie, mug, hat, cell phone case, whatever you want. Remember, freedom is dangerous. The only thing more dangerous is not having it. I will see you in the next video.